Hi everybody, Mrs. Britain is on. Welcome back to my channel. It's always a pleasure being here as we look into the Word of God. As you know by now on this channel we study the Bible and we have begun with the book of the Revelation. And we are learning so much of what God has to say to His people, God has to say to the world at this point in Earth's history. Now, I know you have many questions and as we continue to study, I believe that your questions are being answered. This earth is heading towards its divine destiny, the restoration of the image of God in mind and the restoration of this earth to its Edenic state where there is no sin, no sickness, no evil, no destruction pure holiness and joy and peace and justice. Jesus himself will live with us. Ha! Ah, I know that's been a mouthful, but we continue to study and the word of God reveals to us the truth as it is in Jesus. So join me in this study as we go on this this lesson today. We are looking into the sealed people of God. I want to invite you to have your Bibles close by. Remember, I say it repeatedly, it is important that you read the Bible for yourself. If uh, you are disadvantaged in one way or another, let me take that again. If you are disadvantaged in one way or another, then someone can read for you or uh, we live in an age of technology, you can actually listen to the Word of God. It's amazing. Amen and Amen. And if you have any questions or comments, write them down below. And just a reminder here, a gentle one, I would place all the texts we use in this lesson in the description. So in your own time, you can go back and read them for yourself. Let us pray as we begin. Father God, we invite you again with us. We pray that your presence will be with us as we study. You will give us a heart and a mind to understand and that your word will do its grand work in our lives, calling us to Jesus so that we can surrender our lives to him for today and for eternity. This is my prayer. Amen. As we begin this lesson today, the sealed people of God, the stage must be set, so I will first continue to share the meaning of seals and sealing. We dealt with some of it in our last lesson, Restraining the Winds, the Meaning of Seal and Sealing. Friends, in the ancient world, sealing a book had two main purposes. One sealed the book to conceal the contents from view. Let us look at Isaiah 29 verse 11 and then at Revelation 10 verse 4 and it reads, The entire vision will be to you like the words of a sealed book, which when they give it to the one who is literate, saying, Please read this, he will say, I cannot, for it is sealed. And Revelation 10 verse 4, when the seven peals of thunder had spoken, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up the things which the seven peals of thunder have spoken, and do not write them. So when a book is sealed, as we re read in the Bible, it is to conceal, to hide the contents from view. Additionally, one sealed a book to validate the contents as being authentic and official. Let's look at that in 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 8. 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 8. Let me take that again. 1 Kings 21 verse 8. Then we look at Esther 8 verse 8 and Jeremiah 32 verse 44. A book was sealed in ancient times to validate its contents as being authentic or official. 1 Kings 21 verse 8 
So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent letters to the elders and to the nobles who were living with Naboth in his city. Esther 8 verse 8 Now you write to the Jews as you see fit in the king's name and seal it with the king's signet ring for a decree which is written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's signet ring may not be revoked. Jeremiah 32 verse 44 Men will buy fields for money, sign and seal deeds and call in witnesses in the land of Benjamin, in the environs of Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, in the cities of the hill country, in the cities of the lowland, and in the cities of the Negev. For I will restore their fortunes, declares the Lord. So friends, concealment seems to be the basic purpose of sealing the book in Revelation chapter 5. The book was already validated by being in God's possession. Breaking the seals and opening the book would bring its contents into view. So we have looked at two reasons why uh, manuscripts were sealed, scrolls were sealed in ancient times to conceal the contents and we saw that in Revelation chapter 5 or to validate the contents. Once uh, the king's signet ring which acted as a stamp was placed on a scroll or a manuscript then whatever was in that manuscript was seen as authentic and official. And we just read those instances in the book of First Kings and Esther. On the issue of seal and sealing, a more symbolic use of the word sealing had to do with people. Okay, so books were concealed to cover the content uh, books were sealed, scrolls, manuscripts to um, really make or tell the people that they were official. And now we are seeing that sealing a person could be a sign of ownership. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and then chapter 4 verse 30. And then we'd look at two other passages of scripture which show that sealing a person could be a sign of ownership. Ephesians 1.13 In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4.13 Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. What about Revelation chapter 14 verse 1? Then I looked and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his name and the name of his Father written on their foreheads. So friends, once we, be, we become children of God, as we just read, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. That shows, according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, that we belong to God and the Lord knows those that are His because His people are sealed with the Holy Spirit. But sealing could also be a sign of protection. Sealing could also be a sign of protection. And we will read that in Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 4 to 6. The Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, even through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan all over the abominations which are being committed in its midst. 
But to the others, he said, in my hearing, go through the city after him and strike. Do not let your eye have pity and do not spare. Utterly slay old men, young men, maidens, little children and women, but do not touch any man on whom is the mark. And you shall start from my sanctuary. So they started with the elders who were before the temple. So friends, this is another reason why uh, sealing is significant, to protect the people. And Ezekiel chapter 9, which we just read, is a very potent example of that. God sent forth one man. Go put a mark on those who are crying out against the abominations of the city. And then God sent out others and said, only those who are not marked, who are not sealed, destroy them, but spear those who are marked. So we have looked at four reasons for sealing. To conceal the contents in a book, to give authenticity to the message in a book, a scroll, or manuscript, to show that people belong to God, and finally, to guarantee protection of those who were sealed. Friends, in early Judaism, sealing was also associated with circumcision. And in second century Christianity, sealing was associated with baptism. So the sealing of the people of God would be a sign that they belong to him and that God knows the ones that belong to him. Let's read it again because this is very important. We'll read 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 and then we go to Revelation chapter 9 verse 4. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. Revelation chapter 9. They were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. God knows who belong to him, and those who belong to him are sealed. They are sealed, and they will be protected from destruction. In a spiritual sense, friends, sealing validates where persons stand with God. Let me say that again. Sealing validates where persons stand with God. But the sealing in Revelation chapter 7 is different. Here, the servants of God, already sealed in the first sense, are sealed as a protection against the calamities that accompany the end time. Let's read about that in Revelation chapter 6 verse 15 to Revelation 7 verse 3. Then the kings of the earth and the great men and the commanders of the rich and the strong and every slave and free man hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. And who is able to stand? After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth or on the sea, or on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bond servants of God on their foreheads. So God is about to unleash the winds of destruction upon the earth. 
But he cries out. He sends an angel to cry out, Hold, hold those winds of destruction until all of God's people are sealed. Why? Because these people will be protected from destruction. Now let us look into the sealed people of God. What is the number of God's sealed people? What is the meaning of that specific number? Let's read Revelation chapter 7 verses 4 to verse, verse 8. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the son of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. And from the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. The announcement of the number of those who are sealed marks the completion of the sealing. John hears that their number is 144,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel. The reference here is not to a literal number, but to what it signifies. The number, 144,000, is 12 times 12 times 1,000. It is not a literal number, but it points to what it signifies. 12 is a symbol of God's people. The tribes of Israel and the church built upon the foundation of the 12 apostles. 12 is a symbol of God's people. There were 12 tribes of Israel and the church was built upon the foundation of 12 apostles. Let us look at Ephesians 2 verse 20. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Thus, friends, the number 144,000 stands for the totality of God's end time people. All Israel, Jews and Gentiles who are ready for Christ's return and who will be translated without seeing death are in that number, that, that symbolic number of 144,000. Let's look at Romans 11 verse 26 and 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 53. And it says, And so all Israel will be saved, just as it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. So friends, when Jesus comes, there will be a group of people or there will be people living on the earth. Yes, there will be people living on the earth. And among these people will be God's people represented by the 144,000. That figure represents God's people in totality. Those who will not see death and uh, witness Christ's returning to earth in the clouds of glory. 
So keep that in mind. That figure, 144,000, is not literal. It's a symbolic figure which represents the totality of God's people living on the earth when he returns. The 12 tribes listed in Revelation 7 are obviously not literal. Because I know people question, well, who will be saved if we are, uh, if John is mentioning the 12 tribes? But let's look at those 12, the tribes he mentions. They are obviously not literal, not because uh, there weren't 12 tribes, but because the 12 tribes of Israel, encompassing both the northern and southern kingdoms, are not in existence today. They are not. The ten tribes of the northern kingdom were taken into captivity during the Assyrian conquest where they became integrated with the other nations. Thus, the twelve tribes do not constitute Judaism today. And if you want the reference to show where the northern kingdom was uh, taken into captivity, the reference is 2 Kings 17, verses 6 to 23. It's a long passage, which I will not read. But keep in mind, friends, that the 10 tribes of Israel are not existent today. And the two tribes, that was uh, Judah and Benjamin, of the southern kingdom, they, are, they do not exist today either. So the tribes listed in Revelation chapter 7 are not literal because they do not exist today. Let us go. Also, the list of the 12 tribes in Revelation 7 is like no other found in scripture. Okay, keep that in mind. Judah is listed as the first tribe in Revelation 7. Five instead of Reuben. Also, the tribes of Dan and Ephraim included in the list of Numbers 1 and Ezekiel 48. These tribes are omitted from the list in Revelation 7, while Levi and Joseph are included instead. We read that in Revelation 7 verses 7 and 8. These are important because people feel or people believe that there are 10 literal tribes. No, these tribes do not exist today. And the way John has recorded them shows that that's not what was actually the case in the Old Testament. Judah is not the first tribe. Reuben is. Dan and Ephraim, um, they are omitted. And Levi and Joseph are included. So what is happening there? It is telling us that the 144,000 sealed from the tribes are not literal. They're not literal. They represent the totality of God's people on the earth when Jesus. I must plug in here that the obvious reason for the exclusion of Ephraim and apparently Dan from the list in Revelation 7 is that the Old Test in the Old Testament these two tribes Ephraim and Dan these two tribes are apostate and idolatrous let's read about that in 1st Kings chapter 2 verse 29 and 30 and Hosea chapter 4 verse 17 he set one in Bethel and the other he put in Dan now this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one as far as Dan. Hosea chapter 4, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. So Dan and Ephraim were excluded because they changed their allegiance from the creator of the universe, Jesus Christ, and they gave their allegiance to idols and idol worship. So friends, let me just repeat this again. The list of the tribes in Revelation 7 is not historical, but spiritual. I want to repeat that. The list 
of the tribes in Revelation 7, that list is not historical. It is spiritual. The absence of Dan and Ephraim from the list suggests that the unfaithfulness of these two tribes will have no place among God's sealed people. Also, the church in the New Testament is referred to as the 12 tribes of Israel. Did you know that? Let's read about it in James chapter 1 verse 1. James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad. Greetings. Yes, the church in the New Testament is referred to as the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Revelation 7 stand for the entire people of God who endure to the end, both Jews and Gentiles. Just a gentle reminder, Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 tells us the whole book of Revelation was signified. We studied that in our very first uh, early videos. The whole book was signified in symbolic language referring to the future. Interpreting the tribes as literal descendants of Jacob flies in the face of the fact that at least 10 of those tribes are essentially lost to history. They became assimilated into the Assyrian Empire, right? We can't identify those 10 tribes today, all right? And keep in mind that revelation was signified. Revelation is largely in symbolic language. So that 144,000 being referred to is not historical but spiritual, referring to or representing the entire number of God's faithful people who will be sealed just before he returns to this earth. One of the marked representation of the 144,000 is that in their mouth there is found no guile. The Lord has said, Blessed is the man in whose spirit there is no guile. These 144,000, these people of God who are sealed, profess to be children of God and are represented as following the Lamb. They follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. And we know who the Lamb is. We studied that when we looked at Revelation chapter 5. They go, they are prefigured before us as standing on Mount Zion, girt for holy service, clothed in white linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. But all who follow the Lamb in heaven will first have followed him on earth. They have followed him in trusting, loving, willing obedience. They have followed him, not fretfully and capriciously, but confidently, truthfully, as the flock follows the shepherd. That's the 144,000. That's the representative people. No guile in their mouth. Truthful, honest following Jesus wherever he goes. With the Lamb upon Mount Zion, having the harps of God, they stand. The 144,000 that were redeemed from among men. And there is heard as the sound of many waters and as the sound of a great thunder, the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sing a new song before the throne, a song which no man can learn save the 144,000. Friends, upon the crystal sea before the throne, that sea of glass as, it were, as if it were mingled with fire, so resplendent is it with the glory of God. On that sea, that crystal sea, are gathered the company that have gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. Why? 
because they have been sealed as the people of God. That song, brothers and sisters, friends, that song is the song of Moses and the Lamb, a song of deliverance. None but the 144,000 can learn that song. For it is the song of their experience, an experience such as no other company has ever had. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. These having been translated from earth, from among the living, are counted as the first fruits of God and of the Lamb. So friends, as we close, let us recap. The 144,000 are not a literal group, but a spiritual group. They represent in totality the people of God living on the earth at the time Jesus returns to this planet. This group of people rep in this representative number of 144,000, this group of people are sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's what sealing is. The Holy Spirit seals them so that they follow the Lamb wherever He goes. And there is no guile in their mouth. They live pure lives. They believe in the unadulterated truth of the Gospel. They believe in Jesus Christ. They do not give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They are pure. Yes, friends, they stand for the entire people of God who endure to the end, sealed and ready to receive Jesus. They are both Jews and Gentiles. Friends, as we close, my question to you is, the question I want you to ponder is, if God allows you to live until Jesus returns in his resplendent glory, will you be one of the people sealed by God to be protected from the calamities that accompany his second coming? Will you be one of those people in that group, the people of God, who will be found with no guile in their mouth, who follow Jesus wherever he goes. Will you be one of those people? Will you? Friends, I have given my life to Jesus. I want to be sealed if God allows me to live to that time. I want to be sealed with his Holy Spirit to be protected from the calamities that will occur. I want to be one of those persons who follow the Lamb whithersoever they go. He goes where, wherever he goes. Friend, won't you join me in this? Won't you follow Jesus wherever he goes? I pray that you will. Praise the Lord. As we close, I want to say thank you to all those who view this channel. The, um, sub, the, those who subscribe are going up slowly but surely. God is in it. I am not disturbed. Eventually, the Holy Spirit would lead persons to view this channel. So thank you. And remember to like and subscribe and share. Uh, encourage others to come and listen and learn what the Bible is saying to us in this time. And remember to write your questions and comments down below so that we can interact as I answer your questions and read your comments. Our next lesson is on the great multitude. The question will be answered, are the 144,000 and the great multitude two different groups of two ways of describing the same end time people of God? In other words, is the 144,000 group the same as the great multitude? Make sure to join me in the next lesson as we look at 
the great multitude. Let us pray. Oh God, this lesson is so profound. You are sealing your people. You are sealing us with the Holy Spirit. There are many who are yet to be sealed. I pray that the Holy Spirit, oh God, will draw them to Jesus. And each one will surrender their lives to you. So that each one of us will be accounted worthy to be in that number who will be sealed and protected and saved in your eternal kingdom. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Until next time when Mrs. Britton is on, goodbye. <laughs>